Cue the music. Let's go. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the OBB Legend and OG member of the Orange Bowl Boys, and welcome to that edition of Student of the Game. The Miami Hurricanes finally did it. They announced Shannon Dawson as the new Miami Hurricanes OC, and I figured, you know, for that introductory student in the game, why not we go ahead and watch a matchup when he played against a former OC, SMU's current head coach, Rhett Lashley. So here we go, first quarter, 14-7, really wanted to pay attention to the passing tree and the passing concepts. 11 set personnel, one tight end here to the field side, one running back, stacked wide receivers outside the numbers. Miami Hurricanes take inventory of the actual space. So what is going to be the concept? Front driving receiver is going to run a dig, or that's an in route. And the trailing wide receiver, he's going to sit a curl, and I like where he finds a soft spot. I like when offenses give the wide receivers freedom for that, especially when they're trying to beat zone. This is the aggressive side. It's not going to be the recipient side, but I really like the way this plays off. I'm going to run this real time so you can watch it. Quarterback's going to have several hitches, and I'm going to go ahead and watch this back because it is something I typically do watching the quarterback drop to wide receiver relationship. It's not bad on rewatch, and there's a completion to the dig, but let's watch. At the apex of the drop, one, two, three, hitch. There you go. You see at the three-step portion, you're going to have the underneath routes coming in view. Another hitch, boom. Now you have the other routes coming into view. Good system there. Quarterback can find multiple rhythms. It's not disjointed. And then I want to go ahead and I'm going to show you how this comes open. See the single high safety? We're going to back this up. When the single high safety is patrolling, this I like this side because this is smash. This is a staple, right? You're going to have the outside guy hit a stop, and then this number two is going to run a corner. But guess what happens? It's a double move. He's snapping back towards the middle of the field. He's occupying the single high safety. That's dirty. I really like that concept, and that's no safety in the middle of the field. Quarterback keeps his eyes on the prize. Easy pitch and catch. We're off and running, Canes fans. On to the next clip, and it appears to be 10 set personnel, one running back, no tight ends listed on the field. So we have four wide receivers currently. Two by two look, again, to the short side of the field. They have stacked wide receivers. And this is a very aggressive vertical profile here by the Houston offense. And what do I mean by that? Well, they're sending three wide receivers on vertical pass routes at the high end of the passing tree. So you're going to have two nines and an eight. Nine meaning a vertical. There's going to be a stemmed vertical up here to the field side. And the field side, two is going to be taking an eight route or a post. So the recipient is going to be this crosser, number one. And I want you to pay attention to his route because it's not your traditional route. Watch him. Right here, stop. He's reading something. I believe wholeheartedly he's reading this linebacker. If the linebacker would have flexed out and seen the daylight, he would have choiced this across the field earlier. But as he's staying inside, next thing you know, he decides to take this upfield. <laughs> now he's got read number two. There's somebody trying to bracket him inside of his face. So instead of getting on top of him, he goes back and clears behind the linebacker. That's what leads to the completion. That's my hypothesis anyways, and a staple of air raid offenses is what's known as choice routes. You have the choice to run a route based on what the defense gives you. So, nets you a high school open first down. Let's go back because I definitely want to see the quarterback's footwork here. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Probably would have been better suited, I'm going to be honest, with the deep breaking routes to be a gun five, uh, but we make it work. We make it work. If you have the ability to give Tyler Van Dyke time and they keep a running back into block here, SMU is only bringing five. Houston has six. You give any quarterback time, mind you. Yeah. First down. So multi-formational base, multi-personnel base. Now you're in your 12-set personnel. Here's one running back, two tight ends. All 11 personnel here inside the frame. They're going to run some orbit motion. It creates and elicits a response from the defense. They're going to rotate to single high, drop down the free safety, down into the box to meet the orbit motion. And the run strength set heavily right here to the field side. So obviously SMU is paying attention, but they leverage back into the boundary with a counter. Block it relatively well. Good gain. 
five, six yards. Sometimes you can play speed and space, and sometimes you can come in strategic. Noted. So sometimes the phone booth can be an advantage, especially when you go ahead and slide into a PA Max Protect look. 12-set personnel, one running back. Here are your two tight ends. <laughs> Everybody's in the frame, all 22. It's not all 22 video. It's just all 22 guys are with – you're staring at them. So motion. Now the motion, I like the motion. You're seeing a defender run across the formation, high indication that this is man coverage because he has to go where his man goes. And this is what I mean, PA max protect. Here you go. Play action, boom. One of the tight ends stayed in the block. One of the running backs stayed in the block. Great job. They fanned up their protection a little to the right side to get somebody who was walking up late. And essentially, you only have two people on routes. And that's fine, especially when the result is this. And I'll show you how this result happens. Because when you're into a max protect look, you might have a little extra time. Pay attention to the route. Aggressive. And ah! Saw that? Saw that little jab step out, sell the corner, got the cornerback's hips, no doubt, to fly open that way, and hit him with the post route. Bang! Hey, this looks like a Lance Gidry defense. Two down linemen, two walk-up defenders. They were in this configuration. Stats by scoop said 69% of the time. Hey, yo. So here we go over to the offensive side of the ball, and I'm going to say that this is an RPO. And I like the message that it sends because it's aggressive. Now, why do I want to call this an RPO? Because traditionally, the line of scrimmage is a pane of glass, or so it was taught to me. When the offensive linemen run through it, there's a run element, typically a run. When they hug it, it's typically play action. And when they back away from it, it's a pass. Pay attention to the right tackle. He's immediately through the glass. You also have some pulling linemen. So, if you're selling the play action, and I don't know the play call, but if you're selling the play action like this, kudos to you. But if it's an RPO, and I think that it is, I like the aggressive nature. Because why? Quarterback has the ability, the green light. There it is. One-on-one -on -one nature into the boundary. And once he looks out there and he sees a back turn, ball's pulled, that's open. I like it. I like it a lot, actually. Uh, I'd like a lot better if you caught it. That's my favorite number, too. Represent. Come on, 13. See, and the follow-up to that. Now, they're play-actioning off the counter. <laughs> Deep shot. Not afraid to take shots in this vertical base passing system, I can tell you that. At least not from this game. But remember that pane of glass analogy that I use? Now watch them. Yeah, there you go. Now they're hugging. So to me, this looks more standardized play-action. Now, it looks like there's going to be two wide receivers in the same area. Typically, you don't want that. Quarterback just with a bad ball. Play action pass, three people going out in the routes. And it's a shot play. I'm trying to get that post. It's there. Just got to lead them upfield a little bit more, a little bit more of a top-end arm strength. You get that completed. Hey, I know somebody who has a better arm. Hey, it's Tyler. You know, every student in the game stands on its own two feet. And in this game, I think the habitual word I keep using is aggressive. Again, middle of the field, you can expect a shot, and one comes. Ten set personnel, one running back, two by two look. Again, stacked wide receivers, not pictured. We're going to see the touchdown on the tail end of this, but pay attention to this route. Again, a little bit of a choice, sit. Right there, if he has a little soft spot, quarterback can go ahead and deliver the ball after he sits, then he moves. So it's kind of like a two-way go, basically if the quarterback throws it to you, and then if he doesn't, you can go ahead and slide. They Not pictured, but they hit a wide receiver earlier in a game on something similar. And here's the shot. Over the top. Good. Now we're going to go ahead and let this play, because this is the combo at the bottom of the screen, and I like what it does, especially if somebody can emerge for the Miami Hurricanes with some speed and a bona fide number one deep threat because this is what happens. This is CB1. CB1's in a press variety up top. He's initially over wide receiver one. But by doing this switch release from that stack look, now wide receiver two gets on DB1 and wide receiver one goes on DB2. And guess what? He's DB2 for a reason. Now the speed, too much for it. 
can't keep up. Easy way to go ahead and leverage a one-on-one -on -one matchup on DB2. I like it. Aggressive. Full disclosure, I love exoticism inside the red zone. And I like this play, fake pop pass quarterback counter here. Full disclosure, the Houston quarterback, been watching this film now for a little bit, it's not necessarily the most fleet of foot. I can definitely see Tyler Van Dyke pulling this play off. He's got some sneaky athleticism, mind you. And if need be, you got a Ferrari with feet on the bench named Jakari Brown. So here you go. Come in. Here's the fake pop pass. There it is. Here comes the quarterback counter. Nice, easy gain. Get closer inside the red zone. So watching that back, obviously, you have the ability to give the pop pass. It's there. They're selling it. Brings out SMU defenders with it. That's a nice, easy way to loosen the box numbers. Block it just a little bit better. Maybe you get inside the end zone. But don't worry, they keep scoring lots of touchdowns in this game. Well, this is about as easy as it can get inside the red zone. You don't know how many times last year I would criticize former OC Josh Gaddis for play action in the red zone, and then the running back would essentially go to no man's land and the quarterback would take hellacious hits. There was one game, Canes fans, mind you, where all three quarterbacks took hits inside the red zone on play action passes. Yeah, not good. But here you go. Play action pass. This time the running back's looking for somebody to block. He's not just running into no man's land. And this is as easy as it gets. Touchdown. Two men are out. Bang. Max protect. Let's watch it again. 12 set personnel. One running back. Two tight ends. One on one routes. And I like what wide receiver one does initially. He's going to go ahead and come inside. That's going to create that natural rub, natural pick. And wide receiver two, the slot, is just going to beeline right off the back hip of DB1 inside the end zone. Little things, man. Little things. Bang. Bang. Now, I like seeing these kind of nuances on film, especially for the quarterbacks. It's going to be play-action pass. Some pressure, it seems like it's coming from the field side, and it does. Watch what the quarterback does with his feet. Ready? Here comes the play action. Look where he is as far as a line goes. The block's over here. So he slides on this side of the hash, gets away. Now, this is going to be an incomplete pass, but if he's hovering around here, this play's probably going to get batted down because one-on-one -on -one matchup with the running back. Defense wins this one. Still touches the quarterback. Doesn't really impede that throw. Just doesn't hit it but I really do like the quarterback footwork and that little subtle nuance to get that playoff. So it works on two sides of the coin. When the play's not there as a quarterback, can you bail your OC out? But can your OC still help you while you are bailing him out? And here's a good example. First, three by one side, very traditional concepts. You're going to have an in and in, and then slot three, he's going to be running a corner. Now, I like how the whole field plays here for the quarterback because I have a slot and I have a post so I can read this middle of the field obviously if one of the safeties cheats over maybe I got this post that doesn't happen here good job by SMU as far as the coverage you're going to notice it right here ah, this post is running right into the defender this corner is covered you know they they do a pretty good job here now Quarterback's got to bail his OC out, but there's a couple things that his OC is doing and what he's teaching his wide receivers to help him. Just notice now here to the field side, wide receiver one and two. There's that delayed little shimmy. It wasn't there initially on the sit. He's going to slide in. He's starting to get open. Now as we go ahead and escape the pocket, wide receiver one kicks back out. And that's what allows the play to be somewhat successful, even though SMU did their job initially. Now, late in the game, and obviously SMU is probably tired. They've given up 56 points. Houston's given up 77. <laughs> in this instance, though, it's the slot twos, right? And I vividly remember Mark Richt attaching bubble screens constantly to his RPO and his IZ or inside zone runs for this. Watch what happens with both the slots. See how they just go ahead and do outbreaking routes? That takes this DB in man. That takes this DB in man. They're not inside. They're not condensed. And this is what speed and space can do for you. Obviously, linebacker, a little lackadaisical. That's fine. Maybe a hold there. 
And then you get one missed tackle. And that's really the only individual that touched. Well, second individual. Too late. Bang. Once again, here's how the play. You just loosen the box numbers even more so. You only have five in the box. They get sucked out. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. One more time for the people in the back. Bang. And this is going to be the last clip of the evening. And we're going to have to tip our cap to Red Lashley in the defense here because Ace Gun 2x2 look, and they have the perfect play call on the defensive side of the ball. I've always said this. For the most part, I'm not the biggest fan of mirrored concepts, meaning whatever this side does, this side does. I think standardized blanket coverage is a lot of time can eat that. Now, obviously, there's option routes that play off of that, what have you, but the concept, smash, double smash. Rhett Lashley used to run a ton of this concept. However, quarterback, you got to be on alert, especially when you run this smash variant because corner, sometimes you'll see this guy hit the stop. Sometimes you see them do the dig route, and that's what happens here on the dig. So watch this. Boom. So when he leaves on the dig, quarterback's anticipating this throw he sees it open because he sees some leverage away here from the safety. So he throws the ball, and look, cornerback one goes off his initial primary coverage responsibility, understands combos. Obviously, Rhett Lashley does a ton of this, so he probably sees this all the time in practice. And and, and I want to go ahead and watch this back because look at the top of the screen. It's exactly the same thing. They had it covered every which way. Quarterback needs to see that. Probably check that down. This was a fun game. Get to see a lot of the passing concepts, especially when Houston got down. I could see a situation where Tyler in this style of offense will do really, really well. Actually excited to see more. We're going to continue to break this down on the Student of the Game series and over at the OBB Legend. Please check this out. I'm your boy, Ro, managing editor for the OBB Legend, and OG member of the Orange Bowl Boys. Bang.